Hey, I'm Xavier Johnson, and welcome to Underground Examination. Today, our guest is Rhett Repco. Hey, how are you guys doing? We're doing great. All right, and let's get into, like, some questions. How are y'all, besides how are y'all guys doing, how did y'all get into music? Um, I've been doing music pretty much my whole life for the past 10 years. I went to school for it, so now I'm here. Uh, I started when I was uh, about in sixth grade. Uh, my family comes from a musical background, so my mom played piano and my dad played uh, trombone. So. so you would say, like, music is in your blood, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I probably started when I was like, I don't know, 10, and it's probably courtesy of having like cool parents who let me, you know, play in the basement and play all hours doing burnout sessions, playing the Zeppelin for three or four hours straight, you know. Um, so yeah, it comes in my blood too. I think my grandfather was probably in the, in the army band uh, playing like snare or something, so I've always kind of been a drummer and more guided towards that, I think. So you would say like it, like, in the movies, you were that one drummer kid who had the drums there always in the in the garage. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you watch Whiplash, that's actually pretty close Still to my is. my life. Still is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I started from a young age, just like the rest of the guys. My uh, my grandmother used to play piano for me uh, in the living room all the time, and my grandfather gave me a guitar at about seven. I've been playing ever since. Been, been playing ever since. All right. How would you guys like describe? y'all's music uh, i'd say it's a mix of a lot of different styles but it's pretty right now we kind of tell people it's pop alternative rock those are the two biggest styles i think uh, alternative all right can you guys give us a little taste of what y'all got today sure all right By now I'm sure you've heard it all From all our friends and all the world I got a plan to get her back You'll probably think that I've gone mad I'll change my name, I'll change my face I'm a do or that, but it'll take Get me a new job, get me a new car And I can fix the rest, start with her heart before she knows it's gone I'ma fix her heart Yeah, yeah Before she knows it's wrong We'll start from scratch We'll have some laughs And skip the part About my past We'll do it right For sure this time And treat her just The way she likes I'll change my name I'll change I'm a do all that for it all take Get me a new job, get me a new car And I can fix the rest, start with the heart Before she knows it's wrong I'm a fixer heart, yeah, yeah Before she knows I'm everything I'd rather lose myself than her I'll change my name I'll change my face I'm a do all that for it all take get me a new job get me a new car and I can fix the rest thought I was their heart I'll change my name I'll change my face I'm a do what it takes get me a new job All right. I know that's one of y'all recent songs that y'all have come out with, and I re I've actually listened to it, and it's a really, really good one, and I really, really like it. But what was your particular inspiration behind that song? Um, 
I wrote that song about a year ago, just on piano, and I don't know. I guess it was a really bad kind of breakup that <laughs> inspired that one. And then I wanted it to kind of be like this really hard rock song live, like one of our hardest rock songs ever. And that's how we performed it for about a year. But then we took it to Nashville about a month ago, which we just released it since then. And that's when it kind of took form and shaped a bit. And it became a little bit more of a popular sound and incorporated, I don't know, just different alternative elements. I don't know if the guys have any words on that. You pretty much summed it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know that a lot of people say, a lot of people that we talk to say that they write a lot of their songs based off like emotion at the time. And I think that's where tree music really comes from is your particular emotions. So with each of you guys starting really, really young with music, what would say, what would you say your moment that you realize that music is exactly what you want to do, exactly what you want to do with your life. It's something that you just can't live without. Uh, for me, it was when I was a teenager and I just picked up guitar. I was like, all right, this is it. Like, it's done. <laughs> uh, for me, it wasn't It wasn't really uh, when I first started playing guitar, but I think it started, like, in high school, probably, like, junior, senior year, when I realized, like, that this is, like, the main thing that I'm good at, <laughs> and there's not much else, and, you know, I could make money from it and survive from it, so, yeah. So both of you guys would say that in your teenage years that you realized that music is exactly what you wanted to do. And I think that's when we really like realize what we really want to do, especially like in high school, going into college and trying to figure out having all this pressure to figure out what you want to do and whether or whether or not you can make money from it. But what was your passion? Like, when did you realize? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I probably knew I was a musician my first show. And the girl I was dating at the time uh, was like four years older than me or something. And it was it was a big deal, right? But I played, and it was the worst show I've ever played in my life. It's the first show, but I dropped my sticks, and I was all over the place. I knew that I wanted to get back on the stage because I was like, first off, the girlfriend doesn't matter. And I'm not really playing to the crowd. I'm playing because I want to play. And so eventually I picked myself up, and you drop sticks, and you kind of learn and figure it out along the way. That was uh, probably when I was 14. I'm going to be 24 on Sunday, so, you know. 10 years well well happy birthday from us and <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can really remember ever wanting to do anything else uh, so I, I mean I, I pretty much have wanted to do this my whole life and here I am <laughs> so <laughs> here he is living the dream um so did you guys want to give us another song that y'all wrote and then played yeah, uh, a new one all right Ooh, a special song thanks <laughs> Nice, not hearing ourselves, but. <laughs> One, two, oh yeah. This one's called Lately Baby. <laughs> Said 
changing, changing the way I think. I know you're not one for love, but maybe that could change. Right, I, that's a really good song too. But um, last December you came out with the EP "Thanks for the Ride." What was your inspiration behind that particular EP? That's a crazy thing because that EP was like a whole kind of collection of songs that really just fit together. It, it's actually funny. There were eight songs supposed to be on that EP, and it turned out that because of time constraints, we only could get seven. The eighth song was Before She Knows. So that kind of came out now as a single, and that's kind of like a nice little follow-up. But the whole inspiration was just, I guess, I don't know, just feeling like really intense feelings, probably, again, about a relationship ending, you know, and just wanting to get all of that out into one collection of work and just kind of put it out, you know? And I think we succeeded with that. We put a lot into that EP, for sure, so <laughs> it's great. All right, since you put so much into that EP, um. What would be your favorite song on that particular one? They're all so different, but, and they're just different styles, but one of my personal favorites is It Ain't Coming From You, because it's it's just a collection of different styles that you wouldn't think fits together, but it does into one song, and it's just very emotional, and I love performing that live. I know that's one of Stefan's favorites as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the jam, yeah. That, that one's like... I get to use my uh, blue sky pedal on that so I get some ethereal tones and stuff, so <laughs> that's my favorite. All right, and what are, from y'all beginning, and what are y'all each individual goals as a band? I think to just keep growing and expanding. We have things that we kind of visualize and what we want, and as soon as we hit certain peaks and goals, then we kind of go to the next thing, you know? So we've kind of succeeded playing in our region and we went to South by and played Texas in March. So at this point now we're really going to expand and start getting across the country more to our fans that keep asking for us to come out, you know, so we want to finally get to them, start playing shows. And what are you looking like forward to as a goal? Uh, ever since I was a kid and started playing music, I, I always wanted to travel and play music, you know, listening to my favorite bands, seeing that that's what they were doing. I was like, man, that's, uh, that's what I want to do. So, We've already started doing that, going to Nashville and Texas, and here we are in beautiful North Carolina. So <laughs> we're already got a good start here. <laughs> it's beautiful, but it's also like very, very like hot outside. <laughs> it's nothing. Uh, <laughs> Virginia is a different kind of heat. Uh, goals, man. Um, let's see. I don't know. I mean, someone asked me like, what What are your plans for the next three months, six months, year, five years? Uh, I think a goal is to make great music and have fun doing it. You know, um, I want to play and see other people enjoy it. You know, so if we're vibing on stage, like it would be super cool if everyone out there was vibing also. And that's like a really easy attainable goal, I think. Uh, other side quests might include like get signed, you know, or like get the tour going and find our brother band that wants to tour with us. Um, I think 2018 is going to be a good year for accomplishing goals and making gains. All right. I know that's like from what you from what all of you guys said. It sounds like some really really good big important goals that y'all y'all want to accomplish. I think I'm right in line with Rhett. You know, just about growing and uh, Stefan traveling and just moving forward. Oh, keeping it simple. All right. Um, we're gonna play a little game just to make it a little bit um more fun for you guys. I know before we were talking about like some really weird questions. So this is a game that we where each of you pick a different car. Each car has a different question on it, and you kind of have to answer that question. Or I think one of these has something that you have to do. Oh man. <laughs> do I do it now? Yeah. Let me read it. All right. The question is. What is the most memorable? What is the most notable memory of your childhood? 
I have a bad memory, man. So, like, <laughs> I don't even remember what happened last week. Uh, I'm just going to say finding the guitar, man, because... I used to also play saxophone in middle school. So once I picked up the guitar in high school, it's like, wait, I can actually like sing now because my mouth isn't being used as the instrument. So <laughs> there we go. I'm just playing guitar. <laughs> just playing guitar. Yeah. All right, your turn. What is that one say? Okay. This one says, if you are a superhero, what would your superpower be? <laughs> 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 I know we talked about this one before too. Man, yeah. Uh, Gosh, I don't know. I, I'm going to go back to chocolate. I love chocolate. So if I could just make <laughs> chocolate magically appear in, in like places like right now, that's what I would do. I know lots of, lots of people like, 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 would like for you to have that power too because chocolate's kind of tasty. Oh, man. Oh, boy. All right. All right. This one says, what five things you can't live without? Uh, my bandmates. Good answer. Uh, that's like one, right? Um, okay. Uh, how about, uh, can't live without kale because it's green <laughs> and healthy. <laughs> um, three, water. That's an obvious one. Four, uh, my vinyl collection, which is pretty extravagant. Um, and then five, I don't know, probably my drums of any kind. Just drums? Yeah, just drums. Notice how I didn't say like pants or clothes or money <laughs> or something that like maybe you could use. Nah, I'll, I'll live. <laughs> You'll live. I'll All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. Let me see that one. This one says, if you could go back and give your past self advice, what would it be? Um... <laughs> Wrong notes are okay, <laughs> as long as you find the right one eventually. Yeah, like it seems like making mistakes, you have to make them in order like, to like the progress. Yeah, that one. Yep, really good one. All right, what will you guys like be playing next? This will be our final song, and I told her so. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all go ahead and jam out. Just won't let me forget your name You're the only one I've been wanting for days And I told her so And I told her so Baby, I'm looking for something new Oh, and I'd like to find Just won't let me forget your name You're the only one I've been wanting for days And I told her so And I told her so She wants a love that never fades And I want love that starts today I want some love that's here to stay And I want love that ends this pain uh -huh. Gonna end the pain Yeah, yeah 
change My heart just won't let me forget your name The only one I've been wanting for days And I told her so And I told her so next for you guys like what's next as a band what are you guys planning on doing florida tomorrow <laughs> jacksonville <laughs> just jacksonville florida tomorrow are y'all working on some new music we do have some new songs we just played lately baby for you guys and um i don't know when we're going to record it but maybe we're thinking about potentially recording a single to th this summer and releasing it so maybe look forward to that just a little summer surprise exactly. um for fans that already are fans of you guys and don't know how to get in touch touch with you guys, how would they get in touch? Like social media information or anything? Definitely social media. I think Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Those are like the big three for us. And you'll find a little bit of different content on all of them. So I'd say follow us on all of them. And we like to talk to our fans. So yeah. definitely get in touch. All right. And like what's your Facebook and Twitter and Instagram handle? It's all at Rep Repco. Awesome. All right. Um... Thank you guys for watching Underground, Exa Un Underground Examination. I'm Xavier Johnson, and these guys are going to play us out. Thanks, Rhett and the band, for playing for us today. And thank you guys for watching.